How I survived to tell this tale and my three friends didn't make it back alive, I will never understand. They were all better folks than I am, and just as capable. But the night the swamp claimed them was like nothing I ever experienced, before or since. You see, the stories are true. They're all true. And that thing that lurks around these parts, well, it ain't exactly happy when folks come poking around looking for it. What follows is my account of what happened in that deep bayou, and I stand by every damn word of it. It was the end of April 2021, and the sun dipped below the horizon as we ventured into the heart of Honey Island Swamp, the dying light casting long shadows through the dense canopy above. Lena, Eli, Harper, and I moved with purpose, our gear clinking softly with each step. The swamp welcomed us with an eerie silence, the kind that speaks of hidden watchers and whispered secrets. I've got a bad feeling about this, Eli muttered, his camera poised as if to capture the very essence of the swamp's foreboding atmosphere. Lena, ever the skeptic, rolled her eyes but kept her rifle close, her gaze darting between the trees. Harper led us, her steps sure and silent on the moss-covered ground. This place, she began, her voice low, holds more than just stories. Respect it, or it'll swallow you whole. Her warning hung in the air, adding weight to the oppressive atmosphere that already threatened to suffocate us. As night fell, the swamp transformed. Shadows melded into a thick darkness that our flashlights struggled to pierce. Sounds, unsettling in their unfamiliarity, surrounded us. Distant splashes, the rustle of leaves as if something large moved through them, and an occasional guttural growl that seemed too close for comfort. We should set up camp, Harper suggested, her eyes scanning the darkness. We found a small clearing, its ground firm enough to hold our tents. As we worked, the swamp's nocturnal chorus grew louder, a cacophony of cries and calls that made the hair on the back of my neck stand on end. Eli tried to lighten the mood, his laughter forced and hollow in the dense air. Imagine the views when I upload this adventure, he joked, though his voice carried an undercurrent of tension. Lena remained silent, her attention fixed on the perimeter, her expression one of someone who's waiting for the other shoe to drop. I watched her, admiring her resolve, yet wondering if it would be enough to face what lay ahead. Dinner was a quiet affair, each of us lost in our thoughts. The only sound, the crackling of the fire and the ever-present whispers of the swamp. Harper told us of the legends, of the creature that supposedly lurked within these waters, a guardian of the swamp's ancient secrets. It's not just a beast, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. It's the embodiment of the swamp itself, cunning, relentless, and utterly merciless. The fire died down, and one by one, we retreated to our tents, the weight of Harper's stories settling over us like a shroud. I lay awake, listening to the sounds of the swamp, each crack and splash igniting my imagination. Was that the creature, moving silently through the water or just a trick of the mind? Fueled by the tales in the setting, a sudden, sharp cry pierced the night, snapping me out of my reverie. It was close, too close, followed by the sound of something large moving through the underbrush. I grabbed my rifle, my heart pounding in my chest as I peered out of my tent. The campfire, now reduced to embers, cast a faint, flickering light, throwing dancing shadows across the clearing. I could see Lena's silhouette, her figure tense, rifle aimed toward the darkness beyond our camp. Did you hear that? I whispered, stepping out to join her. She nodded, her eyes fixed on the shadows. Something's out there, she replied, her voice steady but laced with an underlying fear. We stood together, watching, waiting for a sign that might never come, the swamp holding its breath along with us. The sense of being watched, of being prey in a hunter's domain, was overwhelming. In that moment, the swamp was no longer just a place. It became a living, breathing entity, filled with malice and hunger. The night wore on, the sounds of the swamp resuming their chorus, as if whatever had been lurking in the shadows had retreated, for now. But the fear remained, 
a constant companion that whispered of dangers unseen and horrors yet to come. We returned to our tents, but sleep was elusive. The swamp had shown us its teeth, a reminder that we were intruders in a world that did not welcome us. As dawn approached, with the first light filtering through the trees, I couldn't shake the feeling that our hunt for the monster was about to become a fight for our very survival. Dawn broke with a reluctant light seeping through the dense canopy, casting the swamp in a palette of grays and muted greens. The night's terrors had momentarily receded, leaving behind a deceptive calm. We emerged from our tents, each of us silently nursing the memories of the previous night's unseen horrors. Eli was the first to break the silence, his voice tinged with a forced cheerfulness. Let's see what our cameras caught last night. But as he played back the footage, the blood drained from his face, replaced by a look of utter disbelief. The rest of us gathered around, watching the grainy images flicker on the small screen. There, amidst the static and the night sounds, was a glimpse of something moving. A shadow, large and undeniably bipedal, passed in front of the camera, its form too indistinct to identify, but too deliberate in its movements to be anything but intelligent. A collective shiver ran through us, the reality of our situation settling in with a newfound weight. It's here, Harper murmured her voice barely audible over the sound of our accelerated heartbeats. The monster. It's real. The morning's light brought no comfort, only the stark realization that we were far from alone in the swamp. We packed our camp with a sense of urgency, the thrill of the hunt now overshadowed by the primal instinct to survive. As we ventured deeper into the swamp, the signs of the creature's presence became more frequent broken branches at heights no man could reach, footprints that left deep impressions in the mud, and a path of disturbed foliage that suggested something large had recently passed through. We followed the trail, our weapons at the ready, moving with a caution born of fear. Lena's skepticism had vanished, replaced by a grim determination. Eli's camera was now a constant presence, as if by capturing the creature, he could somehow make sense of it. Harper led us with a quiet resolve, but I could see the tension in her every step, the knowledge that we were walking into the lair of a beast beyond our understanding. The swamp seemed to close in around us, the air thick with humidity and the scent of decay. Every sound was a potential threat, every shadow a possible hideaway for the creature we sought. Then, without warning, Eli vanished. One moment he was behind me, his footsteps a comforting assurance of our number. The next, he was gone, his scream cutting through the swamp like a knife. Panic ensued. We called his name, our voices desperate, but the swamp swallowed the sound, offering no echo, no sign of where he might have gone. It was as if the earth had opened up and taken him. We found his camera first, lying abandoned in the mud, its lens cracked, the last footage a chaotic scramble through dense foliage, the sound of his breath heavy with terror, and then a final guttural roar before silence. The discovery was a turning point. Fear turned to horror, the thrill of the hunt to a desperate fight for survival. We were no longer hunters, we were prey, stalked by something that moved through the swamp with an ease that belied its size. Harper was next. She had been leading us, her familiarity with the swamp our only advantage, but even that was not enough. A momentary separation a sudden silence, and she was gone. Her disappearance was a silent testament to the creature's cunning, a blow that shattered what little hope we had left. We searched for her, calling her name, but the swamp remained indifferent to our pleas. Lena and I huddled together as the reality of our situation sank in. We were alone, two against the swamp and its monstrous inhabitant. The day waned, the light dimming as if to mirror our dwindling chances of survival. We made a camp, more out of necessity than hope, our conversations sparse, our thoughts consumed by the fear of what night would bring. As darkness enveloped us once more, we sat back to back, our weapons ready, our senses straining against the oppressive silence of the swamp. Every rustle, every splash was a potential attack, every moment stretched into an eternity of anticipation. The creature had shown itself a master of the hunt, 
using the swamp to its advantage, isolating us, picking us off one by one. Lena and I knew the night would be long, filled with terrors both seen and unseen. But we also knew we would face it together, our resolve hardened by the losses we had endured, determined to survive the nightmare we had walked into. The swamp watched, its ancient eyes hidden in the darkness, waiting for the moment to claim its next victim. And we, the last of our party, waited for the inevitable, the final confrontation with the monster of Honey Island Swamp. The darkness of the swamp was absolute, a thick cloak that seemed to swallow the weak beam of our flashlight's hole. Lena and I sat back to back, our rifles clutched tightly, every sound magnified by the silence that hung between the distant calls of the swamp's nocturnal creatures. The loss of Harper and Eli weighed heavily on us, a palpable presence in the small clearing we dared to call our camp for the night. We can't stay here, Lena whispered, her voice tight with barely contained panic. It's playing with us, hunting us. I nodded, my throat dry. At first light we move. We'll make for the ridge Harper mentioned. It might give us a vantage point, some advantage. The night stretched on, an endless parade of shadows and sounds that teased the edges of our fraying sanity. Sleep was an impossible dream, each minute an eternity spent waiting for the inevitable rush of shadows that would herald the creature's attack. But the attack never came. Instead, the swamp seemed content to let its ambiance of dread gnaw at our resolve. Dawn broke with a reluctant gray light that did little to dispel the shadows beneath the dense canopy. We packed quickly, leaving no trace of our presence save for the flattened earth where we had sat. With Harper gone, navigating fell to me, and I led us toward what I hoped would be higher ground, a desperate bid for some semblance of safety. As we moved, the swamp seemed to come alive around us, a hostile entity that watched our every step. The signs of the creature's passage were everywhere, Trees with bark shredded at a height no man could reach, the remains of animals torn apart with savage strength, and footprints that seemed to mock our own, leading us further into the creature's domain. Our journey was a descent into desperation. Each step took us deeper into a nightmare landscape where the very air felt thick with threat. Lena's presence beside me was the only thing that kept the edges of panic at bay her determination a beacon in the suffocating darkness of the swamp. Midday found us at the base of the ridge, the ground rising steeply before us. The climb was treacherous, the earth loose and wet beneath our feet, but it offered a temporary reprieve from the feeling of being watched. At the summit, we paused, catching our breath. The swamp spread out like a malignant growth below us. We're not going to make it out, Lena said, her voice resigned her eyes scanning the endless green expanse for any sign of the creature. I turned to her, about to speak, when the world exploded into chaos. Lena was ripped away from me, her scream cutting through the air as she disappeared over the ridge's edge. I rushed forward, my rifle raised, only to find nothing but disturbed earth where Lena had stood. The creature had struck silently, with terrifying speed, leaving no trace of Lena except for the marks of her struggle. The realization hit me. I was alone, utterly and completely alone, in the heart of Honey Island Swamp. Panic rose, a tide that threatened to overwhelm me, but with it came a surge of desperate anger. I would not be taken so easily. If the creature wanted me, it would have to face me on my terms. I set traps, crude and hastily constructed from what I had on hand, and waited. The swamp seemed to watch with bated breath, its myriad sounds falling to a hushed whisper, as if in anticipation of the coming conflict. Night fell once more, a shroud that wrapped the swamp in darkness. I waited, my rifle ready, every sense straining for any sign of the creature. Hours passed, the tension a tangible thing, until finally, the silence was broken by the snap of a branch. It was here. The creature moved like a shadow, its form glimpsed only in the brief moments when it crossed the moonlit patches between the trees. My heart hammered in my chest as I tracked its movements, the rifle heavy in my hands. Then, with a roar that shook the very air, it charged. The beast was a nightmare made flesh, its eyes glowing with a malevolent light, 
its form a grotesque parody of man and monster intertwined. I fired, the sound deafening in the enclosed space, but the creature was relentless. The battle was a blur of motion and noise, the creature's strength astonishing. It tore through my traps as if they were nothing, closing the distance with terrifying speed. I fought with every ounce of strength I had, driven by fear, by rage, by the desperate need to survive. In the end, it was a lucky shot that turned the tide. A bullet that found its mark in the creature's eye, sending it reeling back into the darkness with a howl of pain. I didn't wait to see if it would return. Seizing the moment, I fled, stumbling through the darkness, driven by a primal instinct to escape, to live. The swamp was a maze, but fear lent me speed, and somehow I made it through the night. Dawn found me broken, bleeding, but alive, emerging from the swamp's grasp like a man reborn. The creature did not pursue me beyond its domain, its roar a distant echo that faded with each step I took away from that place of nightmares. I emerged from Honey Island Swamp a sole survivor, carrying with me the tale of the creature that dwells within its heart. A tale of terror, of loss, and of the indomitable will to survive against the darkness. The swamp had claimed my friends, had sought to claim me. But in the end, I had escaped its clutches. But freedom came at a cost. The memories of what I had seen, of what I had lost, would haunt me forever. Honey Island Swamp remains, a dark stain on the map, a warning to those who would dare its depths in search of monsters. For within its embrace lies a horror beyond understanding, a creature that is the very embodiment of the swamp itself, cunning, relentless, and utterly merciless. The swamp's dense foliage seemed to close in around me as I made my way through the underbrush, the air thick with the scent of decay and a palpable sense of dread. My heart pounded in my chest, each beat a reminder of the terrifying solitude that had been forced upon me by the swamp's relentless inhabitant. The loss of Lena, taken so brutally and suddenly, had left a void of fear and anger in its wake. Her determination, her strength, all vanished in an instant, leaving behind only the echo of her screams. The swamp, with its endless shadows and hidden dangers, seemed to mock my despair, a sinister whisper that promised my demise. As the day waned, I found myself standing at the edge of a clearing, the ground before me scarred by the signs of our previous encounters with the creature. This was where Lena had made her last stand, and where I would make mine. The thought of fleeing, of abandoning the hunt, never crossed my mind. The creature had taken everything from me, my friends, my sense of safety, my peace. It would not take my resolve. The clearing was silent, the usual sounds of the swamp muted, as if the very earth was holding its breath. I set about preparing, every trap, every plan, laid out with a single purpose. To kill the monster that had turned our hunt into a nightmare. Night fell like a curtain, plunging the world into darkness, the air filled with the oppressive weight of waiting. I positioned myself in the center of the clearing, my rifle in hand, every sense attuned to the slightest sound, the smallest movement. The hours stretched on, a test of endurance, every shadow a potential threat, every noise a possible herald of my end. Then, without warning, it came. A low, guttural growl broke the silence, sending a shiver down my spine. The creature emerged from the shadows, its eyes glowing with a malevolent intelligence, its form a grotesque testament to the nightmares that lurked within the swamp. It moved with a deliberate, menacing grace, its gaze fixed on me as if it understood this was the culmination of our deadly dance. The battle that ensued was a blur of motion and violence. The creature was fast, impossibly so, its movements a whirlwind of savagery that seemed to defy the laws of nature. I fired, each shot a desperate bid for survival. But the beast was relentless. It dodged and weaved, its own attacks a terrifying display of power and malice. Our struggle was a testament to the primal forces of survival two beings driven by the singular desire to live, to emerge victorious from the blood-soaked earth of the clearing. The night air was filled with the sounds of our conflict, the roar of the gun, the snarls of the beast, 
the harsh breaths that tore from my lungs. In the end, it was not cunning that decided the outcome, nor was it strength. It was sheer, unadulterated will. As the creature lunged, I managed to sidestep, its momentum carrying it past me. I turned, my rifle now useless, discarded in favor of the knife I had always carried. With a cry that was part rage, part despair, I drove the blade into the creature's side. The beast howled, a sound of pain and fury that echoed through the swamp, its body thrashing in a final, desperate attempt to rid itself of the mortal wound. I stepped back, watching as the life faded from its eyes, the glow dimming until all that was left was the still, silent form of the monster that had haunted our steps. I stood alone in the clearing, the silence of the swamp now a deafening roar in my ears. Lena, Eli, Harper, they were gone, their lives claimed by the darkness that I had now extinguished. I was the sole survivor, but the victory was hollow, the cost immeasurable. The swamp would remain, its secrets and horrors hidden beneath the canopy of trees. But the creature, the embodiment of those terrors, lay defeated at my feet. I had come seeking a monster, driven by the thrill of the hunt. I left a survivor, marked by the scars of a battle not just with the beast, but with the very heart of darkness itself. As dawn broke, casting a pale light over the scene of our final confrontation, I made my way out of the swamp, the weight of the ordeal heavy upon my shoulders. The tale of Honey Island Swamp and its monster would live on, a chilling reminder of the cost of hubris, of the thin line between hunter and hunted. I emerged from the swamp changed, a living testament to the horrors that dwell in the shadows of the world. The story of our hunt would be told, a cautionary tale of the darkness that lies in wait for those who dare to seek it out.